welcome back. Now that we've filled all the holes on the cabinet and we've given it a good sanding, given it one or a few coats of primer, and now today we're going to be using the actual paint to finish it off. It's going to be a white unit, so I'm just using my spray gun here. It's an Urbauer HVLP gravity spray gun. I've already used some water to make it go through the gun a lot easier. So as that good looking guy just said, today I'm painting. Well spraying in fact. This is how I tend to paint all my projects. It's quick and let's face it, so much more fun than using a brush. And the finish, a lot of the time it is superb. I prime this off camera as it's pretty much what I'm doing here. This is going to be the back of the cabinet. Now I've done exactly the same of what I did to the, um, the main cabinet there. I've primed it a few times with a spray gun, sanded it down with uh, 120 grit and now I'm applying the finishing coat. To help the paint pass through the spray gun easier I have watered down the paint with water. I believe I used approximately 400 millilitres of paint and added around 50 millilitres of water. You want to get a single cream consistency but overall it will depend on your gun and pressure. With this gun I use a 25 litre compressor with a high CFM rating. CFM stands for cubic feet per minute and is the measurement to determine the effectiveness of the air compressor for different situations. For this gun the PSI or pounds per square inch is required to be set around 2.5 to 3. This is low considering that my compressor goes up to 8 PSI. Between spraying I move my tension to the crates. These are all sanded down so there are no splinters for little fingers to catch on. The belt sander I find is the best way to get all the bits uniform as there was a slight height difference in some boards. Once all the slats are at the same height I move back to the orbital sander to give a better finish. I also at this stage round off the corners. I am using 80 grit on the sander so this works really well. Over the sanding of all four large crates I used five pieces of sandpaper. I'm using the cheap tool station hook and loop and to be fair they are useless but they are cheap as chips. So as I said I am between spraying so I am back to put on another coat of paint to the cabinet. In total I think I put on about 5 coats. When you spray you are only putting on a very light coat, over time you build up a nice thick and even finish. Be sure to start and stop spraying off the piece so you don't get any build up of paint anywhere. With all the crates now nice and sanded I move on to staining. I am using a product I bought from Wix for a worktop I made for my bathroom. It's a stain and varnish in one and it looks great. It's easy to apply and dries nice and quick. With the larger crates I stained the outside and put them out in the sun to dry. Once I completed all the crates, I brought them back in to stain the inside. The crates were outside and out of mind, so I move on to the runners. I thought for a while about how I would do this, but came up with a nice design.
As you'll see, it's a T-shape. The crates will sit on the lower half and the T-shapes are to be placed between two of the crates. The outers will be the same L-shape we saw on the drawers. These get cut to length on the miter station and then glued into place using CA glue. The runners are sanded and then waxed so the crates can run over them with as little ease as possible. I use the crates to help with the placement of the slides. Seeing as the wax is out, I thought I'd move on to the drawers. At this point, I only wax the inner parts, making sure no wax gets on the area the glue will be added. With all the parts waxed, I have a quick dry fit to make sure everything still fits together as it should. Once this is done, I apply glue to the joints and apply clamps. I use off cuts when clamping so I don't dent the wood on the drawer. These are then placed outside to dry. Okay, we're now moving on to the next day and I'm cutting the front for the drawers. This again is walnut and is slightly thicker than the walnuts I used for the sides and the front.
I cut the walnut to the right width and then go back and forth to the miter saw to make sure the fit is perfect. When I come to attaching the front, I use two bits of paper folded over to hold the front off the cabinet. The tape is used as a pull as once the fronts go on they are a right bugger to get back out again. I use CA glue again to temporarily attach the front and then come back with brass screws to permanently fix. With this all done I come back with a sander to clean up the whole drawer and then use wax as a finish. The wax is put on with a cotton cloth, left for a few minutes, then I come back to buff it out. The finish is really nice and as I said with the crate slides makes the drawers slide nice and easy. The crates needed a handle so I cut out a design on a piece of plywood and using my router with a flush trim bit I am able to transfer my design. Once the handles are all cut, I come back with a round over bit to soften the edges. Before I finish this episode, I wanted to plane the pieces I need for the worktop. These bits of wood are remnants of my old stair handrail. I planed one up a long time ago and found the wood to be stunning and stable. All I'm doing here is planing the top few millimetres off, mainly the paint. With fresh blades in the thicknesser, this task is a breeze.
join me in part 3 where we will finish the cabinet off and install it. Be sure to follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Make sure you subscribe so you are the first to see my new release videos. Thank you for watching and until next time.